search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough And you came along And put me back together And every desire Turn back.
right. Well, thanks for joining us again tonight. And uh, we've got a couple of things I want to let you know about as we get started. We're going to do um, kind of a part two of what we did last, uh, last time on Tuesday, which was you know, respecting authority and, and uh, the biblical, you know, teaching on that and how the church and how we as church, you know, leaders are trying to, you know, navigate that whole issue. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to talk about um, something that we're planning, uh, which is small groups, and, and we've been kind of telling you about that and talking about that a little bit. Um, small groups are going to be starting in June, and so some are starting like right away, like June 1st and 2nd. Uh, some are starting, you know, later um, in the in the week, in the month. So, um, and the plan is to get all those on our website. We don't have them up yet. Somebody asked about that. They said they're looking for our small group signups on our website. They're not there yet. Uh, right now, we're still in the process of getting our small group leaders and you know times and dates and all that stuff and the curriculums and and trying to get that stuff really figured out. And we're getting there um, slowly but surely. And then probably early next week, we'll get that on our website and you can sign up for a small group. And, uh, and so one of the things that that's going to do for us is that we've been doing this uh, virtual Devo on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we will continue to do Tuesdays um, and through June and we'll see you know beyond that. Um, and then Thursday night, I, what I'm actually planning on is I'm gonna do a uh, class, so we'll have 10 people or so um, in, in our class, but it'll also be available uh, through Facebook Live, so it'll be interesting. Um, what we're gonna <clears throat> try to do, we're gonna do hot topics. So if you have uh, a topic that you're interested in or something that you have a question about, uh, let me know, and uh, we're gonna do like four weeks of, of hot topics through uh, the month of June. Um, and we'll have 10 people in the room, we'll discuss it, we'll do Bible study on it, and then we'll, it'll also be on uh, Facebook Live while we're doing that. So that's just one, one of the things that we're doing, and uh, we have several different you know, people teaching classes and, and that kind of thing, so there, there will be a lot of different options. And uh, next week on Wednesday, we have our, our council meeting. We're going to talk about uh, with our church leaders, um, you know, what the next steps are, how to how to proceed from here, uh, what that looks like. So be in prayer for, for us as we consider and talk and think about all that um, because we have certain things that we'd like to do, um, but we also want to make sure that we're doing everything uh, above reproach. So um, kind of leads us into our topic tonight. Last uh, time we <clears throat> talked, it was, you know, we really focused in on um, Romans 13, Titus 2, uh, 1 Peter chapter, what was it, 2 or 3? Uh, I think it was chapter 2. Um, but um, we're going to focus in on Titus 3. And uh, Jenny is here with us tonight. So if you have questions, comments, she's going to uh, keep an eye on those and she can feed those to us. So if, you, if we want to respond to some things that you're thinking and questions that you have, we can do that. Um, but just to kind of get our, our minds, you know, in the right direction here, Titus chapter 3, verses uh, 1 and 2, says, Remind the people uh, to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility toward all men. And I think as we kind of really try to, you know, be respectful through this whole process and through this time, I think that's a really good um, instruction for us to remember uh, wherever we are, you know, whatever our opinions are, whatever our political, you know, leanings are, whoever we're listening to, um, as Christians, you know, we take our direction from God's word and he's telling us, you know, no matter what, you know, how you feel or what your response is, make sure that it's peaceable, it's considerate, it's mm -hmm. humble, and it's um, and it's good that people can look at it and say, you know, even if I don't agree with you, at least, you know, I believe that you have good intentions and in what you're trying to do. Um, so that's kind of the backdrop of uh, what we want to be thinking about. And uh, wanted to just kind of recap a little bit. Okay, so Romans 13 um, and Titus and 1 Peter, they're, they're really the, the 
clear direction of God's word to say the church should be submissive to the government, to the governing authorities um, in which whatever, whatever time, whatever country you live in, um, as best you can, as long as it doesn't uh, oppose your conviction and your faith and your obedience to God, to be subject to the authorities that are you know, put into place by God to uh, produce peace and prosperity. That's there. It's that's God's intention for government. Mm. Uh, don't oppose it, it unless it, it you know opposes your conviction. Um, that kind of thing. So uh, as we kind of go a little bit further, I want to take that a little bit further into our particular situation. Okay, so um, in general, the church and as Christians, we want to to be law-abiding citizens, to do what is right in the eyes of the law, to be above reproach. Okay, that is our goal, and, and we don't ever want to seem like we're rebelling against that unless or until it would be absolutely necessary because it would um, throw us into disobedience to God. And at that point, we would be under a conviction to say, I cannot follow the law, I have to follow God, and whatever consequences there may be, again, uh, what we said was, Scripture clearly teaches that you may pay a high price. You may pay with your life to do that. God doesn't guarantee that he's just going to protect you from any harm. Uh, you may go to jail. I mean, a lot of the early Christians, uh, a lot of people have been martyred throughout the ages for opposing the government in terms of trying to you know, stay faithful uh, to their God. Uh, so he doesn't say that he, you won't face uh, criminal charges, uh, jail, or even death. But if it comes to that point of conviction, you need to follow the Lord. Okay, but in our particular situation right now, um, we're in this weird kind of situation where <clears throat> we're, not, we're not facing a law, okay? And I don't know if everybody understands that necessarily, okay? We're facing a, in, in, at least in our state and in, in across the, the United States, it, it has been um, a governor's... Um, privilege to produce this order, you know, and so uh, in our state, we have this executive order to shelter at home, etc. That's not a law, okay? That is basically a high-powered uh, recommendation. Uh, now, he does have the force of certain legal ramifications that he can bring uh, to in, enforce his recommendation. You know, he has the power of the state police behind him. He has certain things that he can do in, in uh, terms of state-mandated things. So he can remove state licenses for businesses that um, would violate this executive order, etc. Uh, for the church, we're in a very different scenario. And uh, some people understand this. Some people maybe don't understand this. But um, this has always been... Uh, an issue of public health and safety, okay? And we understood that from day one, okay? When we were coming back from El Salvador, uh, March 16th, you know, we came right into the situation, coronavirus and uh, the, the pandemic, and everybody's kind of fearful of how this is going to impact people. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw things happening all, all over the world, uh, especially in Italy, uh, people were getting sick and dying, and the fear was that if we don't do something, then the death toll uh, would, would skyrocket, uh, hospitals would be overwhelmed, uh, they wouldn't have enough ventilators, they, the hospitals you know, couldn't handle the number of people that would be coming in for treatment, and just it would be you know, devastating to people's public health and safety. And so what happens for the church is that because of the First Amendment, you need to go back and read that, but because of the First Amendment, um, we we have this special privilege, this special freedom, liberty that that the government cannot actually remove our ability to gather. They can't do that. The uh, Fourteenth Amendment actually guarantees that no state or local government can make another law that would supersede the First Amendment. So we're guaranteed the right as churches, as, as religious institutions, uh, to meet, uh, to gather, and to have freedom of speech and have freedom of assembly, and, and, and no law can be made to restrict that. So here's what I want to tell you, is that when the church um, agreed early on, 
Okay, now we may not have known that we were agreeing to this willingly, but what we did was we agreed early on uh, that we would respect uh, the authority of, of the government that said, you know, we want you to stay at home, we want to, for public health and safety, we want you to restrict your gatherings, etc. We, we did that out of respect, not because it was a law that we had to follow. Okay, and so uh, the church abided by that. Uh, putting the health and safety of the communities that we're in and the, the society that we're in ahead of our own desire to get together for worship as churches. Okay, so when you begin to kind of understand that, then you start to see a little bit of why this, why we're wrestling so much with when and how to get back together. Because the issue is still public health and safety. Okay, that, that continues to be the thing on the table. Um, and now I'm just going to tell you my thoughts and opinions about this. And you can take it or leave it. You can agree. You can disagree. I, I'm not trying to bully anybody into thinking the way that I think. But it's just how I see it and understand it. Um, early on, we were concerned that, that if this was potentially a very devastating thing, right? That the hospitals could be overwhelmed. That a lot of people could die. Okay, here we are two months later plus. And uh, in, in Mercer County, I can't speak for everywhere around the world, um, but I mean, you're, you are seeing similar things around the world. Uh, in Mercer County, we've had a handful of cases, you know, a dozen or so cases, uh, z almost zero hospitalizations. I think there might have been one hospitalization, no deaths. Um, and because the numbers are all inflated and mixed up and confused because people are saying, uh, reporting COVID deaths as anybody who dies with COVID. Okay, so the terminology is if you die in a car accident, but you had COVID at the time, they count that as a COVID death because you died with COVID. You died with that virus in you, even though that wasn't the cause of your death. Then it was counted. So the numbers are all, all over the place. We can't really track exactly well what, who really died from this disease. But here, at this point, the, the health and wellness and the safety of our community is, is really not in jeopardy. It's not in jeopardy. I mean, in terms of um, there being an overwhelming, you know, need to restrict people's movement because we might, you know, overwhelm the hospitals, it's not, not the case. It doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, the, this virus is not nearly as deadly as what we initially thought or, or that was, you know, being, being told to us uh, early on. Um, and so when we, you know, as Christians and, and as churches try to look at this and say, is this really, you know, is it necessary that we do not, you know, have public worship gatherings because mm -hmm. it, it would devastate our communities in terms of health and wellness and public safety? Um, then everybody's got to make their own decision and judgment about that, okay? And I would say that's you know, definitely something that you have to consider. Is this something that you have to restrict your, your gatherings because it, it would devastate people's health? Um, then the other part of that is um, the fact that there are s several other very important um alarming and concerning issues I feel that the continued quarantine actually produces, mm. uh, which is spiritual dysfunction, mo emotional and mental health issues uh, that uh, I think people uh, are, are experiencing depression and uh, loneliness and uh, fear and things that that we're we're not meant to be isolated as human beings. We were created for uh, environments yeah. where we can be social, and when you can't be social and you can't even walk into stores without feeling like you know, oh, I'm I'm endangering people. I have to wear a mask, and and I can't talk to you, and you have to stay six feet away, and and you feel like you're intruding everywhere that you go. I mean, I think it is causing problems, mental and emotional problems that uh, are more of an issue than what the coronavirus um, fears or concerns would be. I think at some point you have to say the flu virus is out there, coronavirus is out there, lots of you know germs are out there. Everybody should be you know considerate and wise in how they 
You know, if they have health issues, be careful on how you interact with people. Um, if you are sick, be considerate. Don't go and spread, you know, your germs around. But we all carry germs, so just be wise and considerate in how you move about, how you do things, like we always have, should have, right? I mean, isn't that how we should have always been? Yeah, yeah I mean... This isn't new. Well, I, <clears throat> I think that's what can be so frustrating and so... Um, is so make you so sad and depressed is because there's no defined end to this. It's right. Like it just right. And they keep like, pushing the the goal further and further down the road. Yeah. So you're. I mean, you're left with. I mean, you you miss the people that you get to have fellowship with on Sunday, and you mm -hmm. long to see those people. And it's like you keep thinking the end is coming, and it just right. goes longer and longer well back in march it was um oh <clears throat> you know just two weeks and then it was april and it's oh we gotta get now we gotta get all the way through april and then then we got to the end of april and they're like no we're gonna extend it through may and they're like oh i gotta get through may but now i mean our governor is saying that uh, not until there's a a cure basically for this there's got to be a vaccine and it's like okay we're past the point where we're overwhelming or even concerned with overwhelming the the hospitals and all that so why do we have to have a cure for this before we can get back to, to you know, moving about freely? That, that doesn't really make sense. And so, you know, just trying to wrestle with that, um, I think, is something that we all have to do. And, and again, coming back to Scripture, to be considerate, to be gracious, hmm. not to demonize, you know, people who don't agree with your position, your thoughts, or you don't share your fears, or whatever the, the case may be, you know, but... As a church, um, we're, we're wrestling with this because it's not just our right to assemble. We do have the right to assemble, but it's not just that. If it were just that, then you know we would probably just go ahead and start having worship services like normal. But it's more than that. We're dealing with public opinion, too. You know, there are people um, that would be angry, and, and we see this you know, in news uh, stories all over the country, um, that feel like churches are... Um, endangering their communities by re disregarding the recommendations. Well, we don't want to just, you know, thumb our nose at public opinion and say we're going to do what we want. We, we don't want to do that. We want to be considerate to the community that we're in, okay? And so um, we do want to be considerate for public health and safety. I mean, is it, is it in the best interest of the people of our community to gather for worship? And if so, then how do we do it without just throwing caution to the wind. We don't, we don't want to just disregard, you know, that there is a, a virus out there. We know that there's a virus out there and we want to be respectful to that. We want to be respectful to authority. Um, I've been on a couple of calls um, last week or two with, you know, local authorities, with other pastors from the community, from Quad Cities, and just trying to gauge, you know, where people are at and how mm. they're thinking and, and where they're, you know, what their decisions are or, or how they're making decisions. And I'm, I'm actually very pleased, to, you know, in, in how people are uh, thinking and responding. Um, and our local um, sheriff and our local you know, police chief and our city government, I mean, they're very, um, very encouraging in, in the fact that they, they want to see things uh, opened up. They want to see that happen. Um, they they want to see churches, you know, meeting again. Um, and so, but they they're not going to tell you you can or should. They're just going to leave that to you. They're, but uh, in terms of of my sense of what I'm hearing is that um, there's a lot of encouragement that that they want us to do what is in everyone's best interest and they will support us in whatever decision we make. Um, so now we're dealing with what the big question was last week or, or the other day. Uh, when we have these different levels, okay, we got federal, we have you know, our First Amendment rights, we have our state, we have our local you know, uh, representatives and we have our, our uh, city. You know, who do we listen to? Who do we follow? Hmm. Um, and, and I said, you know, that I believe that the local government is the one that you want to listen to for your, some of your direction because they're the ones who are going to physically come into your doors and say you can do this or you can't. Right. Um, and so it's encouraging to me to talk to our, our police chief and he, he's 
encouraging us that they're not going to, and I, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, but they're not going to enforce the executive order um, because it's not their order. It's not, the, the city didn't make that order, our county didn't make that order, the governor did, and so it's up to the governor to enforce it. Local police, the sheriff's department, is not going to enforce it. Uh, they don't want phone calls for people violating social distance because they won't respond to it. Uh, they won't prosecute it. That, that's just not what they're going to do. Um, so that's encouraging because it kind of gives us a sense of, of security within our community. Not every community is like that. Some communities, you know, the local uh, police are telling them, you know, don't meet. Even at the state level, they're saying you can. I saw this story from uh, Maryland. They said the the higher up authority said go ahead up to this amount, but the local um, jurisdiction said no, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so they're topsy turvy from where we're at. So it's you know it's a, it's an issue that everybody's trying to figure out, um, you know, and do the right thing. So we want to respect authority, but <clears throat> whose authority are we listening to the most? Um, mostly, you know, we want to be careful that uh, in obeying the authorities that are there, um, that we don't just give up the, the God-given and constitutional freedoms that we have. Um, and, and that is one of the concerns that I have, is that churches by and large and across the country um, are just kind of handing over mm -hmm. the, the freedom and the rights that, that were so hard won. I mean, people fled um, the tyranny of other countries to come to this country primarily for religious freedom and then it, it, we're just kind of just handing them back over to dictators in some cases um, not to speak too harshly uh, but uh, to say well we'll just wait for your permission to do you know what we ought to be able to do anyway and uh, I don't I don't think that that's really good I think we need to be able to stand up and say I'm going to do what I believe is right uh, I don't want to do it defiantly, but at some point um, we have all the permission that we need from the First Amendment uh, to do what God has called us to do as a church, which is to share the gospel. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because God, God didn't make us to go at this alone, right? And mm -hmm. I, in isolation, I mean, left to our own devices. I mean, yeah, we have the Holy Spirit and I mean, we have God, but like... God it's, meant. We didn't always mean talk for about us to be like that. That, that we, this is Christianity is not something that God ever intended for you to do alone. And then this happens, and we're kind of like, well, everybody's got to kind of do it alone, <laughs> you know? It's like, <laughs> wait a second. I mean, how yeah. do we how do we wrestle with that and do it responsibly? Jenny, are there any questions, comments, any furious uh, responses that we need to? Nope, we did have one comment that just said that they would trust our trust our church leaders and whatever they decide, if they decide to open up, they're going to mm -hmm. trust the leadership to make that decision. Yeah, well, I, I do appreciate that. I feel like there has been so much uh, trust and encouragement and uh, just, I don't know, I, I, positive feedback from our church body, particularly um, patient, gracious um, generous. I mean, honestly, it's been really awesome to see that from our church. And um, I know that you know um, that we're we're not taking any of this lightly. I mean, it is a serious thing, and and we want to do what's right, absolutely right, in everyone's eyes. But at the end of the day, what we know is that no matter what decision we make, it, it will not have one hundred percent agreement. Like somebody's not going to be happy, right? Somebody, if we start meeting before people think we should, somebody's going to think that we're, you know, taking, um, taking too much of a risk. If sure. we don't meet, um, you know, sooner than some people think we should, some people are going to be mad that we're not taking a stand and, you know, all those things. And so, you know, we want to be careful, but we also want to just do what's right in God's eyes and what's right in, in the eyes of the law. And so... Uh, we are considering all that, and prayerfully so, and, and thank, thank you for your continued you know, support and encouragement. It, it goes a long, long way, and your mm -hmm. prayers. Uh, pray for us, because um, we have some ideas, 
um, of what we want to do. Um, and uh, one idea, and I just want to throw this out there because I, I think that um, we do need people to understand like our thought process. Um, but one idea is that we would love to, and I think I've even told um, people before, that we want to have an outdoor service where people can spread out on the lawn and they can social distance, you know, at their own leisure, their own pace, however they can. Stay within your family, spread out, um, but have an outdoor service. If you want to stay in your car, you'll be able to do that. If you feel like you, you know, shouldn't come and your health is at risk and that's fine. We'll still be online, Facebook Live and on our website and you can still stay at home and watch virtually. Um, but just to have that opportunity for people to gather and worship and, and just celebrate, you know, who God is. I'd mm -hmm. love to start doing that. We, my thought is we would potentially do that all summer. Like every week we would be out on the front lawn here at the church and we would have outdoor service every Sunday morning, 10, 15, uh, throughout the summer. If we get rained out, we would basically go back to virtual. So mm -hmm. we would come inside, you know, the small group who, who would be leading worship and we'd have a virtual service and you'd watch online like you've been for the last couple of months. Um, just, just to try to respect all the different aspects of you know, social distancing and masks and all that stuff and, and not, you know, crowding people into a room if they're uncomfortable with that at this point. But um, that's a thought. And so share share with us, you know, you like that idea, you don't like that idea. Um, what do you think the pros and cons are? And, and I'd love to hear more from people about, you know, what your thoughts are. Um, I, I'm excited about that prospect. Oh, man. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, but again, we don't want to do any harm um, in, in what we do choose to do and, and how we pr choose to move forward. So um, it's tough, but uh, I don't know. I think, I think people, at least in our county, and maybe this isn't everywhere, but at least in our county, are ready to move forward. You're just like, come on, let's, let's move ahead. Um, yeah, uh, I think I'm, yeah, I'm so ready <laughs> to meet together again. Yeah. So. I think it's awesome to try to get creatively figure out a way to get people back together in fellowship that respect, like you said, respects mm -hmm. everybody's safety and what they're, you know, comfortable with doing at this point. You give them that opportunity to, to do what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Do you, you <clears throat> do you, you do what is right for you. So if coming is good for you great if if staying in your car is good for you great if you want to you know watch from home great but at least you know you have different opportunities um, instead of just being forced everybody into this one you know way of doing things um, so those are some thoughts um, hopefully you know we've expanded on or at least continued uh, to think about uh, some of the things that we talked about Tuesday um, and, uh, again, I appreciate all your encouragement, your thoughts, your questions. Uh, appreciate that. Last word. Mixers open up the floodgates. Okay. okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to pray for us and, uh, we'll see you next time. Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for the strength of your spirit, Lord, that is moving and calling and rescuing people, Lord, working powerfully through this, Lord. We know that you have great purposes plans and you have done a great work even through uh, the worst of circumstances thank you for that and god we pray your continued power to be poured out lord uh, in the days ahead and uh, bless each family keep them safe but most of all lord keep us bold and courageous for you uh, for your glory and your kingdom in jesus name amen amen